And if they were teaching wrong history back then, they were wrong. And it should have been revised to reflect what actually happened. But that already happened. That's not to say that the history kids are learning now in high schools is perfect. In fact, I'm very critical of that as well. But not because it was whitewashed with confederacyism. <laughs> That's just stupid. I mean, look at me. I'm the whitest person on planet Earth, and you know my background. I just laid it out for you. If anyone was going to be taught Confederate race history, it would have been me, and it didn't happen. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> and for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we have Joy Reid is going to be the source of this particular Daily Dose of Stupid. She had this tweet come out the other day, which I thought was just hilarious. And I feel I don't usually make arguments of authority because I feel that they're weak. But I, I think you'll see why I'm going to make this one. I'm going to make an exception to that rule for this one particular one. And then I'll, I'll get into some more substantive arguments here in a second. So this is Joy Reid the other day tweeting about critical race theory. And her response to one of the tweets in this thread was, Currently, most K-12 students already learn a kind of Confederate race theory whereby the daughters of the Confederacy long ago imposed a version of history wherein slavery was not so bad and had nothing to do with the Civil War. And lynchings and violence never happened. Okay. I want you to keep in mind when I say this that I'm 32 years old. I graduated in 2007. I went K-12 through to the same school. Same school, same building. Never, never moved schools the entire 13 years of my pre-college educational career. This town, Marbury High, is a podunk town. It is, an, it is in Otaga County, the county that has the most dirt roads per square mile of any county in America. So this is out in the boonies. It's the middle of nowhere. You've heard of one stoplight towns. We didn't have a stoplight. We had one four-way stop right next to the Sitco, which was the only gas station in town. That's it. That's where I'm from. This is extremely rural Alabama. And it's only about 45 minutes away from Montgomery, the original capital of the Confederacy. Furthermore, it is only five minutes away from the Confederate Memorial Park. It was so close that you could actually walk to it if you wanted to. It was easier to drive because it is a couple miles. But you can literally walk from my high school to the Confederate Memorial Park. At this school, it was almost the entire time I was there, roughly 85 to 90% white. So an extremely white school. Very small school, only about 500 students, K through 12. In my career at that school, out of the 12 years that I had history, I only had one black history teacher one year in the seventh grade. If anybody was the poster child for Confederate race theory, it would have been me. If anybody in America was learning Confederate race theory, there is no one better situated to have had that taught to them than me. I can assure you it never happened. It simply didn't. We learned about lynchings. We learned about the Civil War. We learned that slavery pay, played a significant part in the Civil War. In fact, I think that my history books probably overemphasized its impact. Not to say that it wasn't the biggest contributing factor, because I think it was, but I think my history books actually overdid it and talked about it as though it was the only thing that was a contributing factor to the Civil War. It talked a lot about lynchings. It also talked an awful lot about the founders being slave owners, that kind of thing. I, I, frankly, I think it overemphasized that a little bit and didn't tell the whole story on that either. But my point in all of that is, if there was anybody that was going to get a whitewashed version of history that favored the South, it should have been me. And all 12 years that I took history there, it never happened. Not once. Now, there is a tiny kernel of truth to what she was saying in the, the Daughters of Confederacy back in the day in the state of Alabama and some other states. They basically approved history and 
sort of fudged it to where it wouldn't be too offensive or too uh, harsh on the South. And that probably wasn't a great idea because after all, they're not educators and they're not historians per se. And so why would they have input into the way that this was going to be taught? I, I understand the rationale there, but the thing is that stopped in the 70s. And again, we're, we're moving now from anecdotal evidence to actual evidence, actual um, arguments for this. I found about three or four articles, several of them from Alabama publications, including AL.com, which I'm normally fairly critical of. But they even said that this stuff, uh, the farthest back they could trace it was being used maybe into the 70s. And so at best, that was 50 years ago. Joy Reid said in her tweet, tweet, the very first word in that tweet was, currently, it's simply not happening. And this is a narrative that they are absolutely married to and will not let go no matter what. They want people to believe that we're essentially living in exactly the same America as we were living in in the 1960s and 70s in the middle of the civil rights movement. They want, to, they want people to think that we have made zero progress since then. And if they were teaching wrong history back then, they were wrong. And it should have been revised to reflect what actually happened. But that already happened. That's not to say that the history kids are learning now in high schools is perfect. In fact, I'm very critical of that as well. But not because it was whitewashed with confederacyism. <laughs> That's just stupid. I mean, look at me. I'm the whitest person on planet Earth, and you know my background. I just laid it out for you. If anyone was going to be taught Confederate race history, it would have been me, and it didn't happen. It wasn't happening then, back before 2007. It's not happening now. But Joy Reid and people on the left have to continue to push this narrative that things haven't changed in 50 years. But here's the thing. Even if it were true, even if every word of what she were saying were 100% true, that we were still living under the Daughters of Confederacy version of history to where, um, and I don't even think their version of history said all the things that she claimed, but uh, that slavery really wasn't that big a deal and it really wasn't that bad and it had nothing to do with the Civil War and there were no lynchings and the Civil Rights Movement didn't really have... Okay, let's pretend that everything that she just claimed was 100% correct. It's still a bad argument. And here's why. Teaching history badly is not an excuse to he teach history badly in a different way later. Two wrongs do not make a right. Saying that there were some school children that learned history wrong, or in, in Reed's case, claiming that it is still going on and they're still learning history in a whitewashed, confederately approved way. Even if that were the case, it still would not be an excuse to skew history the other way and teach it incorrectly in a different light. See, this is the problem with this whole tribalist game that we've got going back and forth is everybody should just be for, let's just teach history the way it actually happened. Let's just go to original sources. You know, don't even worry about the historians all that much. Let's just go to original sources and teach history based on what we know about it. Believe me, I am in favor of overhauling the way that we teach history in this country. It's been bad for a really long time. And as somebody that studied history a lot on his own and had to teach himself a lot of that history, I can attest to that. But because we have taught history incorrectly in one way, that is not an excuse to teach history badly in a different direction or favoring a different group in the future. That simply does not make any sense, even if what she was saying were true. But they are so obsessed with teaching that America has made no progress, and this is the only thing that apparently that Joy Reid can muster. <laughs> To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV Guide and tell them. You know, th the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe! <laughs>